I done watched them niggas do in the view. And they entered a talent show um, at First AME Baptist Church, which was uh, one of the most prominent, maybe still is one of the most prominent uh, churches out here in Southern California, in LA in particular. Um, I did two acts. I was four and a half years old. Um, one of the acts was a poetry act. The other was I was directing a choir, emulating my uncle, who was a choir director at uh, my place of worship. And um, he basically... Uh, well, I basically did exactly what I saw him do. Our our uh, school did not win the talent show. However, there was a talent manager that was in the audience or that was one of the judges. And so what he did was he essentially went up to my dad and told him, like, you know, I think your son is uh, talented and he should probably you should probably think about putting him in, in, in television. My mom and my dad were split up at the time. My dad was watching me. So my, my pops dropped me back off at my mom's house and um told her like yeah some guy gave me a business card she did she threw it in the drawer like you know everybody has that junk drawer she threw it away basically and um then two weeks later we were out playing miniature golf and somebody did the same thing like hey i think you need to uh put your kid in in hollywood or in acting so she was like well you know that's two times in two weeks so maybe i'll just call the first guy so that uh, first gentleman's name is Cleveland O'Neill, and uh, he basically took us from from zero to a hundred, for lack of a better term. And um, yeah, it, it, it was awesome. And you know, we were auditioning. You know, one rule of thumb, you know, uh, just for anybody that's looking to try to get their kid or themselves even into acting, like if you if you're looking for a manager, they shouldn't be asking you for money. You know, if they believe in what your talent is, they believe that you are going to um, help them you know with their business as well as them help you with yours they shouldn't be asking you for you know a 500 dollars deposit to represent you and all that stuff like that so just just thought i'd throw that out there because that's Where? how it went down with us um and i know there's a lot of people that listen to these kind of shows and uh you know just rule of thumb so how long did it take you to um how many trials and tribulations did you have to go through before you got to the um the role of the little rascals uh from what I can remember, there was a few different uh, auditions. I had booked a commercial uh, for Kix cereal. I don't know if y'all remember that back then. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, so I had booked a commercial for Kix cereal. It was right up my alley. I loved the cereal. I was going ham, eating cereal till I almost got sick. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so that was like kind of the first like breakthrough that we had. And then um, the Little Rascals audition came up on our radar and um, I booked it. Um, but the, the crazy part about that, though, is that they had initially cast somebody else um, for the role. And for whatever reason, that wasn't working out with the director. Penelope Spears was the director. Um, and so they weren't they weren't messing with the original buckwheat, if you will. And so I got brought in like at the tail end last minute. Like it was kind of sad, too, because like we actually like crossed paths with the other with the other kid. And it was like, you know, I was a real like sensitive type kid or like i felt bad for him you know i didn't i wasn't thinking like you know this is something that i need to be doing in, in order for my career quote unquote but um yeah that's how that kind of went down like they had an open call or whatever and you know fortunately i was able and lucky or fortunate enough to, to nail it what can you remember from working on the set i know you were young but um what could you remember how were the people how was the whole um, experience of when working on Little Rascals Buckwheat? Yeah, no, it was cool, man. I mean, I, I it kind of set something in me. Um, you know, if you've ever been on, on a set, it has like a certain kind of smell and the atmosphere and the hustle and bustle. And I remember that very, very vividly. I remember my mom getting a chance to meet. I mean, there's like a ton of cameos in that in that film, if you may or may not remember. But yeah. um, Donald Trump was in that film. I'm, Whoopi Goldberg was on, played my mother. You had Reba McIntyre. You had, I mean, that's just to name a few. And you know, these are all huge, huge names. I'm, obviously, uh, Trump is still a huge name for one reason or another today. But um, these were huge names even at the time, right? So there was a lot of celebrities and just a lot of stuff going on. And I think it was actually one, probably one of the best things that I could have did to kind of get my feet wet 
in the industry um, and not feel like I was uh, going to be starstruck by meeting these big, big names and, and whatnot. So I had a blast. Now, um, being a child doing that role and now being an adult looking back on that role, um, did you ever look at the significant or the historical significance of the char character Buckwheat? And if so, what did you think about it once you really dove into what that character was or who that character yeah. was? Yeah, yeah, I, I have actually. Um, that's a great question, too. That's one that I rarely ask. But I do think that, um, you know, that character obviously played and 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 played on some of the uh stereotypes that were abundant in that in that area i think that universal did did a decent job in order to try to kind of make it more current and make it not as um i don't know i can't think of the term like a side show -y or or just too too Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we 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 weren't trying to make it like bamboozle for kids, you know. It was it was a situation like they wanted to make it cute, they wanted to make it funny, and I think that they accomplished that. I got a six year old, and he loves loves the film, and so I mean that tells me all I need to know. And so it actually gives him confidence, um, you know, even seeing myself and the other African American or black kid was stymie. Um, so yeah, between us two, I think that they did a decent enough job to make it to where it didn't have to make it seem painful for uh, folks to see young black kids, um, you know, kind of pandering to, to the stereotypes. Um, but, you know, people are going to see it and take it for whatever they're going to take it for. And, you know, I'm just thankful that, you know, most folks seem to like it. Now, how, how crazy is it to have your six-year-old looking at your six-year-old self? I don't know how old you were at the time, but I'm sure around that age, probably younger, at yourself at that time. How, how was that? I was five, he's six, so yeah. he saw he saw it early. Um, I put him on when probably he was like four or something, but instantly he loved it. And, you know, he doesn't even really, he sees me in it and I think he thinks it's cool, but he just likes the film. And that's, you know, more uh, important to me and something that I, I appreciate too, because he doesn't think of it as like, oh, there's dad. It's like, no, I just like this movie. So right. um, Fresh Prince is a different story though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll get into that, so I'm sure. Yeah, I was gonna actually, I was gonna ask you how many doors did that open up after you know that performance on Little Rascals, and um, was that the next thing you went into after that, or what was like in between that and the first prince? The, the next major thing, I did some stage acting as well. Um, so, um, I know I did a Lunchables ad, I was like a spokesperson for Lunchables for like a year or something like that. Um, so I did Lunchables, um, and then. Um, Fresh Prince was the next major thing that that most people remember me by, um, and yeah, I mean, you know how it goes. Once once you kind of get your your toe in the door, then you know people are at least familiar with some of the stuff that you've done. The fact that Little Rascals was such a huge success out the gates helped a ton. Um, I mean, it was it was crazy um, being that young and being you know moved to the front of the line in certain situations and whatnot, but. Yeah, I mean, I think it for sure played a major role and something that I'm forever grateful for how it played out. You know, um, I hope that the the other kid that <laughs> that had got the part initially is still doing all right. You know, but, you know, that's just how the cookie crumbles in Hollywood sometimes. How, how are you able to handle, you know, pretty much going from nothing to something to being this kid that's known now? Was your life a little bit different, would you say, than the normal kid after, you know, your superstardom? Yeah. For sure, in in the sense of how other people looked at me, um, but I I started out with my mom and I rode out pretty much that whole acting phase, if you will, of my of my life with my mother, and she was very very adamant on making sure, and my and the rest of my family adamant on making sure that I didn't get uh, too high off the ground, and so you know I still had a regular situation at home. Um, turmoils and all that kind of stuff went on regularly. Um, but the only difference was people just felt like they knew who I was based upon a familiar face. So, you know, if it wasn't for her, I probably would have been lost in the sauce, so to speak. And um, I'm very, very, very appreciative that she has been, uh, you know, that instrumental in that part because, you know, you've seen, you know, I don't have to mention any names, but you've seen several child actors go down crazy paths and you know they they are famous for 
you know, one reason or another that has nothing to do with what they did on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of answered my question. I was going to ask you next. How were you able to stay so grounded when we seen so many childhood actors kind of go, like you said, off the rail? We had Raven Simone on probably about six, five, six months ago now. And she was kind of the same way, grounded in her parents and in, and people just kind of surrounding her the right way and doing the right things. Mm -hmm. She was actually in.